Hey, how you guys doing today? <laughs> See, ungodly geeks. <laughs> I'm Luke. I'm Joe. <laughs> and we have nothing to talk about. That's all. Have a good show. You know. No, no, no. We could just do some bullshit, but yeah, we kind of more bullshit to. than normal bullshit. It's been a which is fucking, a lot of bullshit. I don't know. It's been a weird news week. Like, I mean, yeah. the news has destroyed any interest I have of actually looking at the news. I mean, yeah, like because like, all I see is it, just. I, I got to say, it's um, interesting when you sit there and, and realize that uh, our news in the U.S. Yeah. kind of went the way of, um, we got to get ratings, we got to get views, we got to get ratings, we got to get views, and started disregarding the truth in many instances. Mm -hmm. And so now it's all turned into the cycle of... Um, you know, we've got to, we've got to do this. We got to do that. Say whatever, say whatever you have to, which has given rise to all these clickbait headlines and all this bullshit. And it's starting to have the opposite effect on, on people, at least our newer generation where yeah. we just don't give a shit anymore. So we don't care to see the news, watch the news, pay attention to the news, read the news. I don't, I don't pay attention to any of it anymore. It's the, it's either they turn people towards <clears throat> the clickbait and get people that way. Yep. Um, thankfully, I think there are quite a few people who are ter taking an, a, a different turn right. and going and getting their news from other sources. And actually, like, if they look at mainstream news, it's only when they have something specific that's relevant to say. Right. Like when they actually present a real story. Right. Which doesn't always happen very often, but it, it can. Um, but, they, you, you know, people go other places to get their news, Internet sources and things like that. Unfortunately, there's still the fake bullshit, the clickbait. Right, right, yeah. That. I don't know. I thought that the whole Epstein story that came out with ABC News, did you see that? Uh, where they buried a, a new a story on yeah. it? Yeah. I thought that was hilarious, not just because of like the whole the whole controversy, but because I never I didn't realize ABC was still a credible news source in the first place. ABC to me is Good Morning America and they're stupid ass talk shows. Yeah. There's no, yeah. I, I was seriously watching that. Like, wait, they, do they, other than local news and their shit in the morning, like 15 minutes of maybe news. I thought all they did was like, look at this puppy. Oh, we have this cook chef coming on today to do, cook a dinner. Blah, blah, blah. Unless one of their employees, like with Matt Lauer, gets uh, uh, all this stuff about rape and sexual harassment and shit like that. Yeah. That's the only time they actually report on anything. <laughs> I mean, I like it. ABC, NBC, they're just they're I just stopped, about the bullshit. Yeah, I stopped paying attention to a lot of news sources after like, I don't know, 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's gotten to a point where the only news sources I really pay attention to are like my local news stations yeah. because they're worth about half a shit. Uh, yeah, at least you can see local stuff. That, yeah. Like, it's, like, like, it's hard for that to be... I mean, they could twist it and everything else. Sure, sure, sure. But, stories, but it's not. It's not like it's. It's not. It doesn't feel like the same level. Yeah, of yeah. Like, like, like oh, we're we're overly conservative, so we're suppressing or twisting this story. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not like they're going to be or like overly hardcore Trump supporters or hardcore yeah. Bernie Sanders supporters or whatever. It feels less they, opinion. Yeah. There's less opinion. More like, oh, well, this happened today. Like they're still doing news reporting to a degree, right? Yeah. You're still getting actual news value out of them, like um, the incident. A few months ago where a guy got hit outside of Arby's up the road here. You know, mm -hmm. that was like a zoo story that I could get from my local news yeah. because obviously it was a local event for one. But for two, they're not going to try to sit there and twist it into something. They, like, I mean, they could. You know, they, a they black do. man was murdered. Like, no, he, he was crossing the street and got hit. And yeah. then the, the, it was an accident. The, the people who hit him took off because they didn't want to deal with it or whatever. Fine. Yeah. Like, it just happens though, right? Like, that's, I don't know. It's not as... They're not going to try to twist it into a story about gang violence, like you would probably see on some crazy news site, right? I mean, I I don't put them past doing that. Because right. Because they totally do stuff like that. They do, and they do stories that are just useless, but it just doesn't, it's not like, it, it doesn't feel like they're twisting everything and only yeah. reporting on what they agree with. Right. Um, and when they do national news, that's when it's like, okay, turn that off. It's not... It's a local news station. You're not. You're not my national news source. Right. That's where you go to CNN, MSNBC. Some of you go to whatever. I don't know. 
Breitbart or Fox News or whatever. What, you know, it's fine. Yeah, but I mean, I don't. I, I uh, all of those you take with a big grain of salt. Some of them, a whole I mean, fucking salt mine, like fucking Fox. Yeah, no. Like that's an interesting thing too. Like I've completely lost all faith in Fox. Like not that I had much to begin with, because they've always been that that leaning side that's always you know reported on things. You're like, but that's not what happened. You know, like like that's not. That's I not could true. forgive the conservative or the or the at least the um, the Republican leaning if they also didn't focus so much on the religious leaning too. Yeah, because that's I think one of the big problems with the Republican Party that religion is such a huge focus for them. Yeah, and it shouldn't be because we're dealing with government here. Right, um, and we're supposed to have a separation of church and state, but that informs well, so many of their decisions and what they talk about. Let's not get too into that. You know, that's no, not, no, I'm that's just not saying why, why Fox News bothers me more. Uh, um, and I won't lie. Like, when they get caught lying and shit and then constantly, it's hilarious to me. But there are, have been many times where even their own reporters have spoken about out about what a, a Republicans are doing and things like that. So they're not 100% like at fault. And CNN and MSNBC, they do the same thing too. Yeah. It's just who's, you know, who you're going to go with, I guess. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't know. Anyway, let's get started with some news of stupid. Um, at I mean, 22, that is the news of the stupid. <laughs> well, we're not talking about stupid news outlets, but, oh. <laughs> you know, that that's not what news of the stupid is about, Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A 22 year in, uh, blah, blah, blah. A 22-year-old Instagram influencer said kids should learn a bit less about World War II in school because it's so intense. Oh, it's Jesus so intense. And this is why, you know, you got the boomers going, you know, this, this generation's soft. Yeah. And honestly, this this kid looks like he's very soft. Sometimes. But it, it's just, it's I mean, dumb, I'm not even, like, trying to be, like... Dumb I'm, people who don't know, doesn't fucking have kids, doesn't raise kids. Look, you don't have to tell... A fifth grader or a second grader, the realities of World War Two. You don't. No, 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 you don't. That can come later. Yeah. You tell them that, you know, we had these, this is wars. I mean, you, you teach them a little bit of history. That's when a lot of that stuff, I think, is that's when you pour the dates on kids, which is kind of dumb, too. Right. But you get the events that you so that they know these events happen. And then when they get older, you start going more in depth and teach, you know, then you start teaching like, yeah, this is how horrible yeah, right, yeah. And you know this guy has no knowledge of history or he wouldn't – because he wouldn't just be focusing on World War II. He'd mention how fucking horrific World War One was or the Civil War. Or, I, uh, I don't think it needs to be in such a young way to young children. No. Nah. Is that really what he said? I don't think it needs to be in such a young way to young children. <laughs> a young way. Like mentally, mental health. To be told a certain amount of people died for you, he said. It's, I just learned as a child it's so intense. That's – Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, the I don't think you about... give the kids the numbers or anything like that. Right. Um, but I mean... Especially when you're at an age where you still don't understand what death is. You don't, yeah, you don't you have know. a concept. But you don't, you can't just I mean, gloss snap over it. You, I wouldn't want to surprise somebody at, in eighth grade, like, now we're going to go, you know, we're, we've gone through whatever. If you're, if you're in the United States, you're learning American history. If you're, right. you know, in, in the UK or whenever you're starting to teach world history or something, okay, now it's 1940 and we're going to talk about World War Two, or when you get to right, like 1918 yeah. or whenever, right. we're going to talk about um, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and the beginning of World War One. Yeah. And I don't, you don't want the kids to go, "What the fuck's World War One? I? I didn't hear about th-. like." Well, I mean, it's the war. It's the World War before World War Two. Yeah. <laughs> like, <duh. laughs> what do you mean one? Like that that shivering image. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, dude! But but yeah, you know. He's Bentley questioned the utility of teaching about the 70 million people who died in the war. Recent polls show that there's a growing ignorance around the, wor- around the world about the Holocaust, the systematic murder of 6 million Jews in Europe at the center of the, of the Adolf Hitler's plans. Yeah, that's a problem. I, like, why do we not need to learn about that? Like, why do we need you – know, like, how is that not important to sit there and learn about how one man and regime behind him 
systematically murdered six million people because he didn't like the religion they followed or the ethnicity they yeah, were. He thought he, they, his uh, ethnicity was perfect. Like, why is that not something you need to learn about? Why do we not need to learn about this hate? Uh, like, I think I, that's very, very important. Maybe not like in the second or third grade, obviously. No, no, but like, no. I think that's a very important thing that we need to learn because we need to learn about who, you know, how people use second to- or third grade. You learn Nazis bad, right? Nazis bad. Nazis do bad. Yeah, they and do then bad you continue things. on from that. Right. Um, and in 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th grade, when you get into those more mature areas, yeah. that's when you start learning, oh, yeah, he was an asshole and he did yeah, this, this because of this reason. I think I, I think, think we need to learn about the injustices in the world, you know, so that we can learn to avoid them in the future, maybe. It very much seems like um, the, the Holocaust, all of that is not only – used for i mean it's something that should be taught absolutely it's also used as like the catch-all for horrific tragedies and horrific events like that because most people don't learn about the how horrible stalin was yeah. in in russia and in communist russia he killed Which, way more people yeah he was way worse um same thing with mao Zedong. Well, okay I, I think his reasoning might have been different though oh his reasoning's different and i think it that's was, what separates it right yeah yeah but i mean in general of wiping people out uh, because Mao Zedong was wiping people out for religious reasons and, right, and right, yeah. freedom in any speech or anything like that. Right. Um, and uh, like uh, wiping out entire like communities, just going in, wipe them off the uh, uh, completely from existence. Yeah. They like in no record they existed except for bones. Uh, same thing with like even the rape of Nanking. Uh, with J- Japan during World War II, they don't. They, that stuff kind of gets brought up a little bit, but they kind of use the Holocaust and Hitler as the catch-all evil guy, even though there's a lot other evil people. Right. So I think that's why. I mean, fucking maybe I'm completely wrong, but I think that's one of the reasons there is that huge focus, and it was the center of World War II. Right. He's right. The ultimate evil, basically. Um. I mean, I'm not, all right, so this guy continues on. Um, he said, I don't think encouraging death or telling how many people died in a war is going to help. I mean, it doesn't encourage maybe, maybe death. not. I don't see how it encouraged death, right? Um, World War II needs to be taught in moderation to promote mental health and focus on teaching young people real life skills. If you're having a mental breakdown about something that happened 70 years ago, I don't know what to tell you. I can't, I, I can understand some people. Like, the, when you start explaining, if you are going over numbers and explaining how. Right. horrific things sure kids can yeah you know, like some right. kids may internalize and freak out about that uh, I, I mean i could definitely see it being like a big I, deal but like i said i don't think you should go be, numbers you should be so disconnected from it yeah. at the same time though you know like it definitely has a place especially with the how bad it was it, it should be spoken out because i i i remember learning world war one it wasn't just or world war two sorry it wasn't um just about the Holocaust and how right, many right. deaths there were. Right. A big part of teaching that is teaching not letting evil right. continue it's, it's, to be evil. It's sort of the morality of yeah. it. Yeah. It's it's less it's, focus on the numbers and less focus on the events and more yeah. focusing on the morality of it. I all. remember the focus being on um the and I can't even think of the right term for it, but the capitulation that the Allies, specifically France and Germany, or France and the UK uh, had towards Hitler when he started taking countries yeah, and they just constantly, uh, they, they let him have this because now he'll stop. Yeah. And Oh, okay. We'll give him this, this land because now he'll stop right. and then we can avoid the war. And it did, obviously it didn't work. Right. Right. Um, and that, that was like the, the defeating evil, the, we have to, if there is evil, you have to defeat it, which at the same time, Continuing into the modern era, you, there's an argument to be made of you You can't have that mindset. Yeah. Because then you get into the issues we have today. You're fighting the war on terror. Well, half the time you're bombing the terrorists, you're creating more terrorists. Yep. Uh, it's a hell of a lot more difficult now to point at the villain. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's way more ambiguous. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this I do kind of compare, uh, like agree with him on. He says, uh, you know, we need to start focusing, teaching young people real life skills and yes. prepare for current issues that are relevant to us. This is how to get a mortgage. What's the real impact of Brexit and climate change? I, I agree with that. Yeah, no, I he's th- not wrong. It sounds like they really took him 
with the uh, the title completely out of context. He's not as big of a dumbass as he as the. the I mean, I still believe he's a dumbass, but absolutely, he, I mean, he, he's, he's stereotypically he's an influencer. <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah, I'm sorry if you're an influencer, but the stereotype for your your kind is that you're fucking morons. Which, yeah, and yeah, I say you're kind. Are, like we're sitting not. there talking about, like, hey, let's not hate people exactly. and let's not be racist. And like, I just, I, I just, just uh, oh, you fucking drink fucking tea on Instagram and get money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just not, now we're sitting here shitting on influencers like they're a race of people like well you know it's funny most influencers are cancer I'm sorry some yeah it's just people are people yeah but um, you know I, I agree with them on some deg- some no, degrees yeah. but like I don't think you you need to lose any of the focus on World War Two maybe not focus on World War One as much but World War Two is still such a hot topic I think there needs know? yeah yeah I think there still needs to be history still needs to be a thing but that's that's kind of the question you're running into with um, school now and I think it needs to be less about cutting out curriculum yeah for new things and they need to start rethinking how they do um, homework yeah. Where instead of trying, because I, I, when we were in school, there were lots of times where I felt like there's just fucking too much. I mean, I never did my homework because yeah. I didn't care. Most of the, that was my biggest problem. I didn't do homework. I hated writing essays. I could go in and ace tests, but homework and essays I just mean, fucking I, was, last minute every single time. It was all those, like for me, school was one of those things where it's like, I'm acing your exams. I'm acing all the work in, in class. Why do I have to do homework to prove yeah. to me that you know it? And me acing your fucking test, not enough for you? Yeah. Are you serious? I've, I've never gotten below a 90 on any of your tests. Is that not proof enough for you that I know what the fuck the curriculum is about? I, I, I understand. I figure the shit out before you explain it to us. Let, leave me the fuck alone. Don't it's make, just you know. busy work, and yeah. that's all. And, and I hated it. And that's, that's, I think it's good that some schools are like doing away with that. Yeah. Either they have them, uh, they have time to do their work in school, and nothing goes home. Yeah. Like I just, I hate it. I hate it all the time. I hate it. Uh, that's why I ended up dropping out, man. Yeah. School, school wasn't. Here's a bunch of stuff you need to learn. School was memorization and rote, and then prove to us that you memorized it. Like, okay. You know, and I'm looking back now, aside from the maths and the sciences, I don't fucking remember any of my high school experience in regards to the education. Math. The math was goddamn useless. Like, like I, I'm, I'm just that I'm that kind of yeah. person. So I, I remember it all. I remember a lot of my history and social studies, too. But it's like I think the stuff I learned in these classes, I don't remember because none of it is relevant. So I, 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 I guess is... I agree with him on that. Like, we need to stop teaching pointless shit. I think they they really need to start focusing. I mean, when you're when you're dealing with kids, yeah, fucking third grade, first through st- like uh, uh, elementary school in the U.S. Right. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Anywhere primary else. school. Primary school. Yeah. You give them all the general stuff. You give yeah. them the history. You give them all blah, blah blah. They get into high school. They really should start letting students decide what they want for real world application. Yeah. Sure, some kids are going to make the wrong choice. Then come up with some way for them to go back. Like instead of having a GED program, they could start taking classes like, hey, you know what? I decided I didn't want to be this. I'm going to go into this. Start go and take like GED classes to kind of pick that up before going on to college and doing whatever they want to do. Right. Because there's no – they don't teach any real skills in high school. You have your absolute classes that you have to take. Which, and you know, then, that, that's something I take issue with. Why the fuck yeah. do I need four years of English? Yeah. What the fuck's the point of that? Why am I reading eight different books? If I'm going, not going into uh, a writing or anything that I need to... I mean, I, I would argue... That I need European fucking literature for? Yeah, I would argue that that might be a little early to sit there and let somebody do it. I think you should have, like, maybe just a few core classes and then everything else be elective, right? I think that's what you're getting at, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Um, especially when we're talking, like, uh, juniors and seniors. Yeah. Your last two years of high school should be way more focused. Yeah. If you're not going into engineering, you're not going into... Um, something that requires like uh, uh, algebra two and uh, right, math. Yeah. I mean, uh, why are you why are you forcing I should to have another four no, two years of math? Yeah, like because uh, now I, I think they're doing four years of math. Trigonometry. Right. Uh, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, they did four years of math. We required two. 
We, we, you required at least four years of math, four years of English, four years of silent science, and then the rest was electives and a language. You had to have at least one foreign language. Yeah. And it's like, that's dumb. Why do I need four years of English? Well, I remember our school would tell everyone they had to have certain things, but if you actually look into what's required by the U.S. government, it was like two oh, years no, of math, I understand two years what, of social studies. I understand what the U.S. government yeah. But my school would not yeah, pass you unless you had the gra- the credits where you yeah. needed them, which was dumb. You know, like, I went and I found out that if you took debate a second time, it counted as an Eng- you could it would count as an English credit. So even though I had failed uh, junior year English, um, because that was fucking, I took AP. I, I was put into the advanced classes, college classes, whatever. Right, yeah. Um, and I mean, I didn't know to go. No, fuck that. I just was like, okay, cool. I'm, you know, ahead of everybody else. And the English class was fucking, um, like European, not European, but like UK English, uh, England literature or something like the English literature. Yeah. And holy fuck, Canterbury Tales can go fuck itself. Every one of those writers, fuck them. That oh, it was awful. Yeah, right. Macbeth is like, it's okay. I get it. They fucking murdered people, and she's sad and trying to wash the blood off, and I can't wash the fucking blood off. Fuck off. That's kind of how blood works. Yeah, yeah. It's just oh my god, is it terrible? And I just fucking bombed all of it. Yeah, I did. I absolutely nothing in that class. And then senior year rolls around, and then I took summer school because I had failed a bunch of other classes too past everything but summer school English where they all it was was write essays and most of it was write essays on social justice like way early before social justice became the big thing it is on the internet now right and I was a little shithead in high school so I I was even more like I'm not doing any of this right yeah and didn't do fucking any of it and so I'm senior year comes around and they're like you can't graduate you don't have the English credit credit and I'm like well Fuck you. I'll figure this out. Yeah. And I did. Found out, oh, I'll take debate a second time. I took art as an elective for the second time because that got me my elective credits. I was like, I, uh, they were like, okay, well, you have to take math. And I was like, no, I don't. It says right here I need two uh, two credits of math. And I did uh, fucking freshman and sophomore year math. Yeah. I'm not taking a fucking math class. <laughs> yeah, see, um. I was actually taking two English classes and what Oh god, um, I should have shoot myself. Um I, I when I I didn't graduate um when I should have, right? Yeah. Um I was supposed to graduate in two thousand four. Mm-hmm. I ended up going into my entering entering into my fifth year of high school. Um because despite being incredibly intelligent I just didn't care and have the no. motivation. It's hard. And the motivation is the part that kills. I had yeah, no it's motivation hard to, after fourth grade. It's hard to focus on things you're not interested in. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't interested in years of English. I wasn't interested in, you know, anything but science and maths. I, that was my thing. That was my bread and butter. That was the shit I was really, really good at. You know, and I never... I think that's part of the, like, the problems with school, especially in the U.S. these days, is that... You know, there is no flexibility. They, no. You have to learn what they want to teach you, and you don't get to learn what you want to learn. And it's like, well, that's The that, places that, that do do that, usually you have to pay for, or well, you have to be in a wealthy neighborhood. Yeah, for. yeah, yeah. Like, there's there's some places that have realized that, but it's not a general thing. And it's and like, it usually like, it's all a barrier of wealth. Yeah. Well. And so, you know, I, I ended up, when as soon as I hit 18, um, I ended up saying, fuck this, and I dropped out. Yeah, because now my parents are no longer they can no longer be mad at me for not going to school because fuck you I'm a legal adult now Yeah, so you can't make me go to school and so I dropped out and honestly I mean I don't know what I would change if I could go back um, because if I could go back there's not much that I could have changed because I don't I still don't think with what I've learned now um, that I could force myself to do the things I needed to do back then Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I had a scholarship program going. I could have gone to Ohio State and did whatever the fuck I wanted. But it was like getting to that point was the difficult part for me because, like I said, I just – I didn't want to – I they had nothing I wanted to learn. Yeah. So it's like – It's it's an issue where they need to start – and they have to start doing new stuff now. My school, the only computer classes we offered 
were like typing and uh, Excel and things, which are great for business applications, but there was no programming. Yeah, that I can remember. I think the closest thing to programming there was computer classes, uh, but they were building computers. Yeah, um, was a program that took three class periods that you could only take if you were a junior or a senior, I think. Um, and to do that, you would have to have like I I managed my credits. If you're somebody that actually gave a shit and was trying to take multiple years of math and all these other things to get scholarships and whatnot, right? Uh, it became even harder. Right. But those like I took I it, it was a mistake, but I I went with my same thing. I went with my friends instead of doing what I should have done and taking the computer course. Right. Um which also had networking as well, which is really amazing is one of the good the best things they had that people could learn since right. programming wasn't an option. But um I should have taken that instead. I ended up taking construction tech where I went and built a house, which is great if you want to be a fucking construction worker or construction, like a fucking work for a construction company as a manager. One of my friends did, and he's doing amazing right now. Right. He's a fucking like job lead or something, or now I think he's got the desk job. So he sets up the contracts and stuff and he's making fucking Buku bunny um, from being a construction worker, starting right. out from that and going to school for construction and stuff. Right. So, I mean, it just that I went and did it and was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I didn't want to fucking do that with my life. I had no intention to be out there fucking roofing. What, what my the fat ass on a roof. What is wrong with you, man? God. But no, it was friends. All my friends were doing that. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And then talking to other friends who went through the computer program, I was like, well, I didn't even know it existed. Right. Until like I knew the construction work had existed because somebody else talked to us about that. And we were all like gung ho because right. it's getting outside and out of school for three hours. Right. Which on your senior year, that's the fucking best. That's the Yeah, that's the greatest thing ever. Uh, and I didn't really know about the computer course until because that is all one group called it was at the time was our uh, RCTC, which is gone now, I think. Right. Because of the new requirements on students um, that talking to other people when we had the you know you meetings for all the classes and stuff yeah it's yeah. like oh you guys are doing photoshop stuff that's cool right and yeah. then oh you guys built fucking computers and ran networking oh that would have been nice to know yeah yeah well luckily you have someone who does that yeah which is great but it's not helpful if i want to fucking work <laughs> yeah i know i mean i can do it as a job it's just you know finding the jobs are is difficult so. yeah because they you know oh we want the we want your professional experience or we want these well, yeah. degrees i see i have the i have the experience i have certifications it's just i can't get to most of these jobs oh, that's true. because most of them are like out in places i can't reach um because i'm a scrub who doesn't drive yeah so which that's a whole nother like list of bad decisions there <laughs> that you know i don't want to go into i know that feeling so let's move on um an another news is a stupid thing and yeah. it's actually somewhat related to what we normally talk about which is movies and tvs and <laughs> tv shows and video games <laughs> Um, Nigeria's Oscar entry Lionheart disqualify for predominantly English dialogue. Now, before I go any further, I, I, I need to point out that Nigeria's official language yeah. is English. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Um, I, I need to point that out. Uh, that's a very important thing. Genevieve Nanazi's movie did not meet the Academy's rules for international feature film submissions. Nigeria's entry for the international feature film Oscar category was disqualified on Monday because it contained too much English dialogue, leading to a backlash from his filmmaker, Nigerian actor-director Genevieve Nanji, as well as fellow Helmer Evid Duvernay. Lionheart oh, is Nigeria's uh, first ever submission to the Academy Awards. She stars alongside Peter Edigi and Naikim Owa in the film, which she also co-wrote with her producing partner, Chini on Romainu. I know. I, <laughs> just, I need to, just, I need you to can stop just trying skip over this. the names. Yeah. It's just, I guess Joe's face of, oh Lionheart boy. <laughs> premiered at the 2018 Toronto International Film Festival and was acquired by Netflix for worldwide distribution. Um, in April 2019, we announced the name of the foreign language film category change at International Feature Film. We also confirmed that the rules for the category would not change. The intent of the award remains the same, to recognize accomplishment in films created outside of the United States in languages other than English. Why is that a requirement? Because the academy is a I bunch get, of useless old people. I get the U.S. part, right? Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. That's what international means. But why 
English. It's the... Why is that a requirement? English is spoken by, what, 85% of the world, roughly? Yeah. You have to know English if you decide to become a pilot. You know, like, well, maybe not 85% of the world, but it's spoken very widely. It's the most spoken language on the planet, even above, you know, Chinese and the various dialects it has above, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So why would that be a disqualifying rule? The Like, that's dumb. Every year, something comes up that shows more and more why the Oscars and the Academy are just it's run by a bunch of really really wealthy fucking old people that have all this control and they have and the people under them are just supposed to make it sell and they have no fucking idea what they're doing yeah every year there's controversies and it's a mess every year they the movies that they nominate are worse or for one reason like 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 one year it's, hey, your movies uh, are lacking any um, minority filmmakers or like leads and things that, you know, maybe you should probably look into that. Why is why is this and this and this movie not getting nominated? These are amazing films. Yeah. And then the next year they overcompensate and they nominate all movies that just a bunch of movies that don't even deserve it. There's yeah. way better movies out there. Yeah. That that deserve that nomination. But they just it's. It's a mess. It's amazing how they fucked this up. <laughs> yeah. This, this though, this is even more that makes you just look at them and go, are you, do you not fucking understand what you're saying? Yeah. The words that are coming out of your mouth don't make any fucking sense. Why does it have to have subtitles for English listeners to be considered international? What is wrong with you idiots? Like I said, English is spoken in a very large portion of the world it is the it's, most common like, language well, it's not from a poor enough country if they're speaking english it's like it's nigeria it's a pretty goddamn poor country as like, far as i know actually i have no idea i could be speaking well like it's like it's like okay it's like but it's, says if here, it's a good film it should be nominated it is a foreign film Here's the thing that gets you. The decision was criticized by Nazi, who said on Twitter, the movie represents the way we speak as Nigerians. Yeah. This includes English, which acts as a bridge between the 500 plus languages spoken in our country. Jesus fucking Christ. It's no different to how French connects communities in former French colonies. We did I, not choose who colonized us. As yeah. ever, this film and many like it is proudly Nigerian. I guarantee. And they've totally done movies that are like, it take place in, in, um, former French colonies where they speak French and it's, Oh, that's fine. That's, that's, it's just because this is English. But if they had taken one of those 500 dialects and just fudged reality and made it so everyone spoke that they'd have no fucking idea that it was bullshit. And yeah. they'd be like, Oh, good job. Yeah. You exactly. made a good movie. No, they made a movie true to real, their real life, their existence. Yeah. They speak English because there's lots of different dialects. Yeah. I mean, here's oh, a Duvernay. Jesus, fuck. Also slammed the decision that tweet saying to the Academy, you just qualified Nigeria's first ever submission for best international feature f because it's Oh my in God. And it's their fucking first. But English is the official language of Nigeria. Are you barring this country from ever competing for an Oscar in its official language? Mm -hmm. It's like, how can you be this disconnected and dumb? Like, that's the thing. Like it, it's disconnected from like reality, but then it's also really stupid. Yeah. I just, I don't get, it it's amazing to me, you know? That's, that's just, the academy. Like, Nigeria was... It was colonized by the British. Mm -hmm. English is the official language because the Brits were awful back then. It's like if a movie came out of South America. Yeah. It would most likely be in the... Like, a lot of it would be in English, like, like possibly, if it right? Like, if it came from, like, Brazil, you'd yeah. expect it to be in Portuguese, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was a Portuguese colony at some point. You know, it's, it's like... I, I don't... I just don't get it, you know? Like, like, why? Why? It's in English. Ah. Okay, all right. So was the producer Delanove? No, Dervinay is the... She's one of the people who directed it with um, with Genevieve. So, like... Oh, Dervinay is some... Okay. Yeah, she, she's a... Um, yeah. Oh, uh, I was thinking... I was thinking about it. A completely different person. Yeah, Eva DuVernay is the person who helped her with the movie, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, like, the... the um, It doesn't... The, the, this article I'm reading doesn't 
specify who she is exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess she helped her with it in some way because it says, as well as from fellow Helmer, so I, I obviously someone who worked on the movie um, in a lead position of some kind. Yeah. It's like, it, but it is dumb, right? Like, it, it's it's so stupid. Has just The movie has just under 12 minutes of dialogue that is in the Igbo language native to Southeastern Nigeria, while the rest of the 94-minute pick is in English. So it's like, it, that that's the, that's, that's... English is the official language. That means Australia couldn't, you know, make a movie and submit it to this because they speak English. That means, you know, Britain couldn't do it because they speak English. It's like... If they ever... I, I don't think they've ever submitted it in a foreign... in the foreign films category. Well, I, I understand that, but... To, I mean, now with it being international, there's no reason why... You know, they couldn't. So, like, and now what I want to see, and I, I got to see this because something tells me, like, like the woke part of me tells me it's racially motivated. I want to see I somebody. S- from, okay. Yeah. What? What do you see? So, it used to be the category was best For, foreign language. Yeah, it's yeah, not and anymore. It's not anymore. It's yeah. best international film. Right. So, it doesn't matter. It still should be able to be submitted. Right, you yeah. changed the category. You, you might not have changed the rules, but you changed I was the thinking, category. Because in my head, I was thinking, I thought there was a foreign language category. Right. But here, like, all right. So so now what I want to see, I want to see someone from Australia yeah. submit a movie where it's it's all in English because it's Australia and that's what they speak primarily. That's their official language. I, and I want to see, I want to see somebody from Australia submit a, a film to the international uh, be, be, best feature film or whatever mm-hmm. and see if it gets accepted. The there's a there's a lot of backlash about them even having an international film because while all these other movies yes get nominated for and I believe like movies that are made in the UK as well get nominated for Oscars under any of these other categories right allegedly international films can as well and I think they they have sometimes in the past but for the most part I think they don't. They just don't. And you have one foreign language category, which is now your one international category. So does that mean these movies can't get anything else? That means a a comedy from Australia could never probably never get nominated because there's no chance it's going to beat out uh, one of these dramas or anything like oh, yeah. that if that's the only category it can be put in. Uh, that's the I, thing. There's a lot of problems with the Academy. I mean, in most of the time, it's a joke. I, I, I love I love this tweet. Mm-hmm. Um, more than 500 indigenous languages are spoken in Nigeria yet Nigeria's official trademark they put the trademark there yeah. language is English a Nigerian film in English can't win the Oscars foreign film category because it's not foreign enough and they yeah. do trademarks on the foreign part colonizers love to punish the colonized for being colonized Yeah, it's true that does, I mean <sighs> honestly if you were going to have these rules still in place why did you change the name right if if you change the name, the rules should be changed. Because now it is an international international film, and like to sit there and enforce it has to be in a foreign language. Then change the category back to foreign language, films. right? And and make it so that um, you know, just make a whole new category for international films. If you're even I still do think that. international films should just be con- should just be considered the same as any others. If yeah. they are on the same level. I mean, if you're if you're gonna have an international film like that and you're gonna release it in the United States, you should be able to compete in whatever yeah. is appropriate for the type of movie you're producing, right? Like you should be able to best comedy, best drama, best you know like action, the whatever movie of the year or whatever. Yeah, like like you should be able to do that. You know, if some somebody in like you know name a fucking place in the world, I don't even care, produces this amazing film about like what happens during a certain event in their life or whatever. And like, it's, it's incredible. It's thought provoking. It's moving. And it's a great movie. Didn't, I mean, yeah, you know, throw it up there with best. Slumdog movie Millionaire. Year. They, they do that sometimes. Slumdog millionaire won, um, the Academy award. Right. Didn't it for the best move best. I, I want to say I'm reaching back. That's like three or four years, but that's the first one I can think of that. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I know I never uh, – I don't think I ever actually watched this. It won Academy Award for Best Picture. Best Picture, yeah. So it, it they do sometimes get nominated for those when they are these huge groundbreaking movies, which is why I question 
why would you change that category to best international film in yeah. the first place? You, they're already supposed to be available, they're able to be nominated in all these other categories. Why make it so now you, it, you're restricting them? Yeah. And then saying that they have to be in a foreign language when, no, you're opening, it, it, you can't do both. You shouldn't do it at all. Right. But it makes it yeah. makes no goddamn sense. This is definitely a case of you can't have your cake and eat it too. If that movie, if they told that movie, no, you can't be nominated for this, but you you are being nominated for best uh, motion picture, best at, lead lead uh, female lead, yada yada. Right. Yeah. Fine. I'm, I'm much more like okay. I still think it's dumb because you titled that best international film, but. You're still they're going for fucking best right. movie of the year. Right. Which is 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 a good thing. Right. I just I it's it's a dumb situation. It is a very dumb the situation. Oscars are just stupid. Nobody who fucking Academy Awards, the but yeah. Oh well whatever. they're all stupid, it's actually. I agree, yeah. But yeah, I'm I uh I the I only watch the like certain YouTube channels and things after the fact right. that just tear them apart every year. Like even even channels that I consider to be like way too snobbish about movies. One of the my favorite channels, and I think I've mentioned them before, is uh, Your Movie Sucks. Yeah, I don't have that same level of film that this dude does. Like he's he hates on a lot of movies I love for reasons that I think are dumb, but he's hilarious. Right. And when the Oscars come around and they shit on these movies, like movies that win best cin- cinematography. I really don't know much about cinematography. I've learned more now because I've actually like watched things, watched his videos, lots of other people, like film students, people who've studied film to kind of learn what good cinematography is. Right. And then watching them tear apart movies like the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the queen movie, uh, just tear apart how shitty scenes were in that movie where there's scenes where they literally just cut to people's faces. And then at one point they like have a shot where the, they're not even centered, right? The person who's talking, it's focused on like a back. It's it's hilarious when they start talking shit and I can see it's it's focused on a coffee cup off to the side. It's like, Oh, I see now what they're talking about. That's hilarious. And that movie was like, I think it won best cinematography or something (laughs) like that last year. Like, like when they tear the Oscars apart for how shitty it is, it's like, oh my god, this is this is a joke. Yeah, no, um, it really is just a popularity contest because most of the people who get to vote on it are just ran like the people in the industry, a bunch of fucking actors. Yep, and you know they all suck. <laughs> they all I mean, suck at life. For the most part, they're not. I their actors, maybe a lot of them, maybe some of them, know you know what. You know, t- it takes to make a good scene, amazing film, blah blah blah. But for the most part, I think a lot of them are just voting for movies they haven't even seen. They get the screeners, they watch, they're like, oh yeah, that's inspirational here, best cinematography, yeah. or when Suicide Squad won um, best. Uh, when Suicide like, Squad won, won any makeup best. or something like that, yeah. or CGI, I can't remember. But and then movies they like CGI Planet of the Apes, oh god, it... Planet of the Apes, which is an amazing fucking film. Yeah, uh, Andy Serkis <sighs> can't win or even be nominated as best actor, and it can't be nominated as um, uh, film the the film of the year or whatever. Yeah, because it's too much CGI, and they're like, well, that's not acting, even though I mean, yes, it is. Yeah, it is. They put the stuff over them but they still are doing i mean you still got you still got he turned into a fucking monkey people you you got a guy (laughs) sitting there interacting with andy circus while he's got all that fucking dumbass get up on it's like (laughs) with the dots yeah he's got like all the shit on his face he's got the he's got the gimp suit on and it's like oh my god it's you great. have you have to interact with andy circus and pretend he's an ape I doing andy ape circus things. is one of my favorite like, people he's such a great he's so great in acting and he's, everything he's one of those people he's so weird mm-hmm. but like in a wonderful way yes like like johnny depp is wonderfully weird you know, Andy Serkis is wonderfully weird. Johnny Depp has the benefit of being, like, super attractive, though. I like Andy Serkis. I like, um, who's the, oh, what's the, the dude from the meme of, uh, hey, uh, fellow teenagers. Oh, um, oh my God, Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Like, people like that, that are not only wonderfully weird, that are also, like, they're not, they're not your typical Hollywood attractive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're fucking great. Yeah, I know. It, just, they kind of give you someone to relate wholesome. to. Yeah. I'm not attractive and I'm wonderfully weird, you exactly. know? Yeah, you know, so it's like, whatever, dude. 
Uh, <laughs> not Zoe Deschanel. Fuck her. Fuck her and her quirky shit. Uh, she's not. Just kidding. Actually, I'm not. I no, just I, like I agree. Her fuck her. Like she's not. She's not anything special. No, I don't know why everyone went crazy for her. Because she's she's adorable, but like in the creepy obsessed way. No, well, she's not. Like it's the lol, uh, lol random. Is yeah, she, she's her, a she's a spork of she's doom. Quirky, yes. Penguin of doom with the spork. <laughs> Holds up spork. Yeah, I'm like, like, oh, look, <laughs> I'm so random, LOL. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Sit the fuck back down. No one fucking cares. That was not cute then. It's not cute now. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So, whatever. That's just that's just the anger in me. I'm sorry. But it's the truth. It is, man. Like, I just... <sighs> All right. Um, I think I've run out of steam. Maybe you got anything else? Anything we want to touch on? Death Stranding's um, oh, out. Oh, one big thing. Yeah, Death Stranding's out. Hey, swap everybody's mad like. at VGN I, or IGN for uh, reviewing it. Earlier preview. Did they, they, they like, get another early review copy? Did they give it a nine out of ten or a 10 no? They gave it like a six six out of ten or something. Ah, like that. that's so good. That's like, hilarious. Like that's they surprising. Gave, for they, gave like a, they gave it like a six out of ten or something like that. Six point one. There were a one lot of the of... things that people were so angry about. The uh-huh. IGN in the U.S. gave it like six whatever out of 10 yeah. but like apparently ign and like a bunch of other countries gave it like nines and eights and stuff it's like huh yeah well i saw when what little i looked because I, I do want to see some of the reviews i don't like early reviews period that's amazing that I ign mean, gave it that low yeah um was a lot of people who have played it they sound like they don't want to dislike it but it's like this idea of they tried it I, and it, they didn't say walking simulator i can't remember what they called it but they tried to reinvent it as reinvent something really really basic yeah that it is just a really nonsensical traveling game <laughs> like all right so on metacritic which i have moderate faith in you know what it's just in metacritic's like rotten tomatoes it is just a lot of fucking it's an aggregator uh i I like the user reviews on metacritic even though obviously those can be manipulated by user bombs or review bombing yeah but that shows the yeah i'm getting that it's got an 83 from critics 83 average from 82 different critics it's got a 6.2 user score out of 10 Mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah uh see i'm waiting for a few reviews basically the user reviews come down to uh like there's 67 positive critic reviews 13 mixed and two negative yeah um when it comes to user reviews there are 444 positive 38 neutral Mm -hmm. or mixed and then 404 negative oh yeah that Um, sounds yeah you will always that's one thing that user reviews is there's there's way way less middle ground with people like general users right you a lot of times they you love it or hate it is what people people go on and they get if they they dislike something it's a fucking one out of ten if they like it it's nine or ten out of ten Uh, i find it hilarious um i don't know i i like I, I someone I was listening to was talking about this game and they're like, especially when the news came out about Conan O'Brien is in the game. Yeah. And they're like, this is Kojima run wild. Yeah. If there was one thing uh, Konami did that was even remotely good is that they, you know, they're able to kind of keep him in check a little bit. Yeah. And maybe he's going a bit over the top with this and who knows i mean i don't know i'm not gonna play it i don't really care that much for um those his those games uh well maybe that's exactly what happened is just way too much yeah um so i want to i want to read this review yeah from yiker xd hey yiker (laughs) he gives it a three out of ten yeah there are developers who are out there who do their best to put out original concepts, but nobody gives them credit or enough attention. They just get slammed by the media. If Death Stranding wasn't made by Kojima, then you wouldn't see all these fanboys defending it and giving a fake 10 out of 10. This is what happens when you overhype a developer too much. He gets away with saying things like, this game is a new game, a, sh- a new genre rather, a strand genre. Then you play the game and see how atrociously repetitive it is, how pathetically it tries to copy every other open world games like Zelda and Red Dead Redemption 2, how generic a story is, and how generic a lot of its gameplay mechanics are. 
from the very beginning of DS, you can really tell it's a movie rather than an actual game. Yes. Lots of money and resources went into the cast and their cutscenes, even in-game. Barely anything went into perfecting the gameplay of this game, especially the animations and physics. Both are absolutely embarrassing for a game of this size and hype. It's slow, repetitive, generic, boring, and tries so hard to be weird for attention. A glorified, overhyped delivery simulator. Just because it's from Kojima, <laughs> we don't have to lie and overpraise it like it like most of what Kojima and Sony fanboys are doing right now. Take a look at the official reviews. They say the game is repetitive, but give it a 10 out of 10 anyway. Oh, yeah. That, that's no surprising. That's yeah. why I'm legitimately surprised about the IGN America review. Because I would fully expect them to trash the game for three paragraphs and then in the last paragraph be like, but cutscenes are amazing in Kojima and, and, and I loved it 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 because we got an early copy. From Squeezo828 gives it a zero. Jeez. This is not a game. It's a walking simulator with a pretentious yep. story thrown in. Kojima has made some great games in the past, but everyone makes mistakes. Death Stranding is his mistake. I want to play games for fun. If it's fun, why, if it's not fun, why bother? And this game isn't fun in the slightest, so I won't bother and suggest you don't either. Kojima either needs to figure out how he can switch over to making an interactive movie or just make movies. I mean, it sounds okay. like uh, apparently, and I don't, I, I didn't actually look into this, um, but a link on a Discord was was uh, a server I'm a part of was was um, submitted or whatever mm-hmm. posted a couple of days ago. Or so apparently Kojima Productions is going into movie making because of yeah. Death Stranding. Which is like, all right. Yeah, that's what that's, they, that's fucking that's amazing. Surprising. You you can do amazing movies, amazing cutscenes, amazing Amazing, whatever. weird, crazy fucking movies. He needs yes. to team up with um the fucker who makes the shitty uh made that shitty I uh uh Chappie movie. I can't oh, remember the guy's yeah, name. Yeah. I don't I, I I like the guy when he's doing his own stuff. Uh, I thought Chappie was fucking way too goddamn awful. Yeah. But he does weird, quirky shit, and that, that they could team up and make an amazing movie. Cake Dust here has wrote one hell of a review. I'm a huge fan of Ahito Kojima's body of work, and it hurts me to say this, but this Stranding is quite possibly one of the most pretentious, narcissistic, and worst video games ever yeah. made. Run unchecked, Kojima has made a new genre... He puts that in quotes, called Strand Action, also in quotes, that is just a glorified walking simulator with an undercooked asynchronous multiplayer system and lame duck third person melee and shooting that succeeds in challenging only your patience and not you as the player in overcoming meaningful challenges or coming to grips with deep gameplay mechanics. Kojima's insistence of entering Hollywood has made him abandon all reason, and the result is a bloated, self-elating, self-elating video game and the polarization of fans of his. The titular Death Stranding is an event that has destroyed America and drove the people underground as they hide from creatures known as BTs, beached things, and a rain called Timefall that accelerates aging. You play a Sam Porter Bridges, a lone wolf figure who is dragged into uniting a destroyed, divided America via linking the Shiro network so that we can all be connected. Kojima's stick and rope metaphors will be repeated ad nauseum over the course of this 40 hour sludge fest, be it in game communication or the horribly written cutscenes. Kojima's vision for this game is a big open world with absolutely nothing in it, and your goal as the player is to deliver cargo while doing what you can to get the Shiro network up and running. Initially, you are forced to take things slow while you sneak past BTs and try to hike through treacherous terrain while carefully balancing your precious cargo and BB, Bridge Baby. Okay. As you get resources from doing deliveries, you can slowly upgrade your stats and gain access to new equipment that helps make traversal slightly easy. Rivers that you can't cross in the beginning might have bridges to connect to them later on as online players chip in to create and maintain these structures. Ladders can be put up to help you climb steep cliffs. Roads can be made so that your vehicles can move quickly unimpeded by boulders or water bodies. Don't expect anything else from this game. There are no hidden gameplay mechanics that Kojima is keeping under wraps. What gameplay you saw in the trailers and previews is what you will get. During your deliveries, you might get attacked by mules. Other porters like you, only they've gone insane due to the dopamine highs of getting likes for deliveries. And no, I'm not joking. Are you fu- Who just- will try to steal your cargo. Damage taken during combat or falls or while slipping can also damage your cargo, causing you to lose not just missions, but also valuable resources. Fortunately, this is mitigated by the fact that Death Stranding is an utterly easy game, even when played on hard mode. Every so often during your deliveries, you might even come across BTs, and if caught, you will be dragged into a boss fight that is jokingly easy if you choose to face them head-on, or made inconsequential by running away from the boss f- from the fight altogether. <laughs> 
and thus BTs who were supposed to instill a sense of fear in their players and end up becoming like a road end up becoming like a road you can avoid taking. It doesn't help that other boss fights are nothing but jokes where the enemies take their own time in trying to deal damage to you while you fight them without any fear of a decent challenge once you have the weapons necessary to face them head on. If the story is what you came for, then please let me save you time by saying the story in this game is pure fluff and bogged down by glaring plot holes, god-awful writing that can turn even pivotal and poignant moments into cringe fest that will have you wince in pain, whether, wondering whether it's a dreadful English translation job or if it's exactly as intended by Kojima. Mm -hmm. You have one-dimensional side characters with ever so idiotic names like Fragile or Dead Man or Mama, and it doesn't do the game any favor that the names themselves hint as to what their motivations are. It's disappointing because the game's excellent production values and technical fidelity is wasted on such a stupid premise and script. The game truly is beautiful and at times can feel cathartic as you trudge through precarious terrains while braving the elements. These are the moments when the game is at its best, but these moments are not enough to uphold the game's systems. The game has a good score with a huge collection of licensed tracks, so at least you won't be disappointed in the RL front. Fan theories of what the game is about is much more intriguing than the absurd mess that is delivered ultimately by Kojima. Death Stranding feels more like a vanity project of his than an industry changer. Kojima wanted to connect gamers by making us build bridges in Death Stranding, but if a 40 plus hour long glorified walking simulator is a vehicle for building such bridges, then I'd rather burn such bridges and build walls instead. Yeah. So there you go. Don't buy Death Stranding. <laughs> Sad guys. I mean, I just, that, that's a pretty in-depth review. It's not really surprising when you look at how fucking unbelievably hyped Kojima was coming out of Konami, and it was like he could do no fucking wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much what a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of the reviews I'm just skimming through point that out. Like, yeah. that's that's a problem, you know? Like, once he's out and he's doing whatever, he thinks he can get away with it this because reminds of me a of few... The fucking Star Wars prequels. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't let him do things. Yeah. Oh, well. That's not surprising. <sighs> well, there you go. Don't buy Death Stranding. <laughs> the, uh, the other thing, I think, uh, that I was going to talk about. Yes. Uh, the other big thing is this stuff with YouTube kids. Um, oh, my YouTube God. YouTube just yeah. got hit with, like, hundred. I think it was $125 million fine. Right. From the FTC and the U.S. government. Yeah. Um, now they are, because of the laws on um, collecting data on children. Um, they have to figure out how they're going to take and going forward, um, do advertising for kids content on YouTube, right? which has become a, it, it's a big problem since they, they created the YouTube kids app, but they, from user data, they can only, they only like 2% right. of users are using it, which means there's no, they can't argue, oh, well we did this for kids and the kids aren't watching at normal YouTube. No. They are. You can't, you can't, your data even shows they are just watching regular channels or regular YouTube. So right. they're going to make it so targeted ads are no longer available for kids shows or right. for kids channels, right. which is going to murder them because that's uh, a 60 to 90% difference in uh, the amount of pay you get from non-targeted to non-targeted ads. Right. Yeah. No, that's a huge drop. As well as... It's possible that even just family friendly channels would uh, suffer the same fate. So channels that aren't necessarily kids channels, stuff like um, Good Mythical Morning or basically any channel trying to stay monetized now because you can't say like fuck or any curse word in like the first two minutes or something or you get demonetized like like there, there's. And how well, really strict monetized. they are. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't fucking have monetization anyway. But no, it's hilarious. It's like so the first two fucked. minutes, I definitely said fuck. <laughs> yeah, of course we do. We don't give, we don't give a fuck. No, we don't. But it's hilarious. Like, this may, this is the next, like, this is the people are calling it the next adpocalypse. Yeah. And I find it fucking hysterical. I mean, it probably will end up being that, right? Like, yeah, like, like for any channel that, that, uh, it, that relies on that family friendly. Um, moniker if they go that far which they may have to um, that's why there's there's a lot of people lobbying the US government to change the wording in the law so that they just it doesn't affect everyone and kill you know all these um, some businesses all these creators and things like that Yeah, uh, which I think needs to happen but I also think advertisers need to fucking realize that their targeted ads go to the people their ads should be targeting yeah you know it's if know, CNN 
watches a um, terrorist, uh, a, an ISIS video. The advertisement is not on the ISIS video because ISIS supports Coke. Yeah. The advertisement is or on the Coke video. Coke supports ISIS, rather. Yeah. It, it, or, you know, yeah, both ways. But, but specifically, yeah, it's not because they think Coke supports ISIS. It's there because CNN likes Coke. Whoever the fucking channel is. I mean, it's there because, you know, that's what gets the money. Yeah. Well, it gets the money, but it's it's and it's the advertiser analytics. Yes. It goes by what you they think you want. Yeah. It's not just, oh, well, we're going to fund terrorism. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, why not? It's fuck it. stupid. Well, this is, fuck it. We're, we're going to start funding terrorism. I mean, maybe they probably. Who, Who knows? knows? They probably do at some point. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure some of okay, them. Remember do. that at some point, um, you know, uh, Coke actually had cocaine in it. So, you know, oh, that's just, yeah. Coca Cola actually had Coke in hey, it. Hey, look, everything you know, had Coke in it back in the day. That's true. It was in fucking baby medicine. <laughs> it was in. Everyone was on any drugs imaginable in yes, the fucking yeah, yeah. 30s and 40s and 50s. They were just that 20s shit was going more like, but yeah. Oh no, all of it. it. Once you get into the I think 40s. Yeah, but I mean of, like like or when, when it, they started ca- uh, when it when it comes when it come, oh, that, that was done. And it became even bigger. Yeah. Um when alcohol was banned. Oh, prohibition in yeah, the 20s. During prohibition, yeah, oh my during God. the 20s and 30s. Gee, yeah. All right, we're we're done. Anyway, guys, I'm done. Yeah, that, I, that's I, kind of a funny story to me. Like I wanted to do a better episode, and we'll get back on it at some point. Uh, you know, for not our mental having health, nothing, not like completely destroyed. For having nothing, I thought the episode kind of turned out a bit, a bit good. No, yeah, no. I mean, I definitely enjoyed um, the the talk and the speech and the dumb yeah. shit that we covered. So yeah, you know, it was kind of fun. All right, guys, check us out social medias. Yeah, you know, follow us on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram. Although I don't post there anymore because <laughs> I I don't do facebook um luke does the I, facebook I, I though need to post on the facebook luke, luke sometimes posts things on facebook i did well i didn't post the uh destiny episode and then i didn't post the two after that or the one after that whatever it was god damn it oh luke. well but um yeah you know it's whatever at this point uh, <laughs> you guys know what's up you guys give us money on patreon we'll love you forever mm-hmm. even if it's just once for one dollar that's it's still dollar. cool that's still a dollar we didn't have before well it's still sure. like 82 cents after exactly. patreon takes its fees but whatever you know we should sign up for coffee so they can buy us a coffee <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool even though i don't really drink coffee anymore but hey whatever yeah. um but yeah for the ungodly geeks i was joe i was luke you guys have a good day See ya. Fuck EA. Fuck Blizzard and Activision. Yeah, don't forget about that, guys. Fucking Winnie the Pooh assholes. <laughs>